Hi, I'm Janet Galore. I'm a program manager on the strategic prototyping team. Today I'm going to walk you through a conceptual demo of how technologies in the future can radically change how we find, use, and share the world's information. And this is around an educational scenario, but think about how this might be applied to all sorts of activities. Right here I've got a tablet PC that I can use for my classwork, and I've got a lot of different things I can access here, including a really great digital textbook that allows me to explore some anatomy. And so here I've seen a hand with a skeleton, but I can actually overlay a lot of other circulatory muscle systems and even the nervous system. So you'll notice as I'm touching different things that it's pulling in information from the internet. And a lot of the computation is being done locally on my PC here, but I can drill in and access new information. So for example, this is some more information around this particular anatomy lesson, and it's accessing this full 3D model, and if I want to see the whole body, I can zoom out and load the whole model here. And you can see that this really is interactive. It allows me to explore things in my own pace. And if I want, I can explore other parts of the body. Let's take a look at the brain here. So notice here it's, it's loading some more information from various sources, and it zooms me in. And now it's actually going to show me how the synapses work in the brain. And so here's some information that was provided by my professor. It's, a, it's an animation actually showing me how the processes work and the synapses communicate. So we can see that we're using a lot of information that's been authored by other authors. But here's, here's my classmate. And Patrick, he's actually asking me to check out a drawing, and he might actually know that I'm online looking at this area of the model, and so he's done a quick drawing, and he's asking me if I want to look at it over the weekend. So social networking and the social computing we do today can really become useful and deeply integrated with all the things that we want to do. As well, I have access to other resources. So here, down here, I have a whole bunch of other links and resources related to what I personally am interested in and what I've been studying. This has been anticipated by the powerful software. And you'll see that it's using a color coding system so that the, the ones that are red is less related and the ones that are green are very related to my topic of study. And if I don't want to read things from everybody, I can actually just look at all the resources that are provided by people in my study group. Let's take a look at something a little more fun. Um, this caffeine on your and your brain looks kind of interesting. And this is actually a simulation that somebody wrote and is using the same models that I've been interacting with. But they were able to write this little app that I can load, and it, it helps me understand really how the caffeine's going to enhance the activity in my frontal lobe. This is me right now. And just like before, we see that there's a lot of other related information. So if I feel like I'm getting a little off track, I can select something that's a little more related to what I'm looking at. This is a paper from the National Institutes of Health. Now, I don't know about you, but looking at papers, sometimes it's hard to figure out if you really want to explore them deeply. This map helps me out. It's actually a semantic analysis that's been done exploring how all the concepts in the paper are related, and in fact, how they're relating to what I'm studying and what I'm interested in. And if I want to look at the text, it's actually already highlighted a lot of the text that I might have done myself, and again, showing me how it's related and to what I'm working on. And if I want to get a little more information, I can see that there's a language slider here. And so it shows me that this was actually in Japanese, and it's been automatically translated for me. So instead of just being the English Wide Web, it's actually the World Wide Web. And if I want to store those notes, I can add them to all the notes I've been taking. This, this notes application is great because it has a nice timeline here. If you think about the kids today and how they might actually have access to technologies like this in the future, you might have been storing all your notes and the things you've been exploring throughout your life. So imagine I could go back to maybe when I was in junior high and see what I was looking at when I was learning about anatomy there. My drawing style wasn't that great, but um, I can also zoom out a little bit and see the other things I've been, I was working on at that time and how they were all related, including you know uh, tests and, and all my notes I took. And then if I go to present day at that same view, I can see here's what I am studying and all the concepts. So all the things that I'm learning in my life and exploring, I have access to here. As well, I have access to things that I'm planning in the future. 
here's a group presentation that we're working on as a class. And I actually have a meeting here at the library, and we're going to be collaborating on that project. So let me show you how these technologies might help our collaboration in the library. So in the future, we'll see more and more of these surface type in computing environments where we can really share and collaborate together in an easy, open way. Imagine this is in the library, and I'm meeting with my classmates. I have my Slate tablet here. And I'm going to put it down, and it's showing some of the documents that I've collected that I want to share with my classmates. Now, not everybody may have this type of tablet PC. Some people may want to use a phone instead to share and store a lot of their information. And the phones in the future are going to be incredibly powerful computing devices on their, in their own right. So they can also put their phone down and share the information that they've gathered. So some of these docs are pretty cool. Some of them have been highlighted automatically. And I also have this place I can drag the information to and share it with other people in my study group. And let's see, this one looks pretty cool too. I'll share that one out. So we can see that we can share information across devices with other people who aren't present. But besides just the computing devices, even everyday objects will become interactive. Now, this is a model of the brain that we have in the library since we're studying anatomy. And this object has been tagged with a lot of digital information. And so if I put that down on the table, we can see that I've actually got some access points here where I can drill down and get a little bit more information. This is something that somebody tagged this with. It's about um, something that's related to our class. So I'm going to share that out too. So even everyday objects can be part of our overall computing environment. Another thing that we've been playing with and prototyping with are some flexible displays. So this is actually a flexible display here. It's, it's like e-ink, the types of things that you would see on digital books and so on. And we see these evolving into color displays, something that you might be able to roll up or fold and put in your backpack, and then hook up to your phone or other computing device so you have a lot more flexibility. So we've seen a lot of examples here of how we can share more information together in easier ways and natural ways. And we're going to be able to have computing technologies that anticipate our needs and help us really surf the whole world's knowledge in ways that are more productive for us.